In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Uh, today, uh, the feast of St. Raphael is known as, uh, his name means, uh, the healing of God. He's a patron saint of travelers, of healers, of happy marriages. Uh, most of what we know uh, from St. Raphael comes from the book of Tobias, which is all about uh, how the man Tobias and his son are assisted by the archangel St. Raphael. Uh, angels, right? Archangels are messengers from God to man. They do God's will, do God's bidding, and they assist us. And it was the, the you know, the uh, fathers of the church recognized that the more powerful a person is, or rather um, a sign of somebody's power, is that they do things through others. They don't do them themselves. They have somebody else do it for them. And, and this is how God operates in the world. He speaks to man through the angels, through the prophets, through the scriptures. Right? This is how God operates. And the angels, it, it, they participate in the benevolence of God. Because any time God does something for man, it is for man's uh, good. It is for his benefit. It is uh, a, a, an extension of his mercy. And so the angels are uh, given the privilege of participating in this. And now I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole story of Tobias, but I encourage everybody to read it if you haven't already. And if you have, read it again. Uh, very good book, uh, very interesting indeed. And it shows us how does God uh, intervene in our lives? How do angels work in our lives? And from the book of Tobias, we learn this is how it works. And we never know. Like Tobias and his father would never have known that this was an angel helping them had not St. Raphael told them. And so how many times in our own lives is that happening, right? Either through the influence of somebody or circumstances or events and so on. So the, the entire book is showing us uh, do you want to know how angels intervene in your life? This is one example, something like this. Uh, now, there's two things in particular, two people. There, there is the elder Tobias in the story, and he was uh, a righteous Jew. Uh, he was in exile in the Babylonian captivity. He upheld the law. He risked his life and property even in Babylon. He was still upholding the Jewish law, which was against the law there in Babylon in that pagan um, city. He was ridiculed by his friends, even by his wife, but he stayed faithful and true and never doubted and never transgressed. In fact, one evening he was burying the dead, right? It was illegal to bury uh, Jews. He would go out and gather their bodies and give them a burial by night. And uh, he was uh, resting one day after uh, being tired out from his labors and hot dung fell into his eyes and blinded him. And this was his reward for upholding the law of God. He was, he was, he was ridiculed for this. You, you upheld the law of God perfectly, and this is your reward. Blindness. He never lost his faith, uh, but life was not easy. In fact, life was so painful for Tobias, he prayed for death. Another story, another person, a story is Sarah. She was a daughter of a kinsman of Tobias, and she had been married to seven men. All of them had been killed by a demon the night of their wedding. And this was a great humiliation and shame to Sarah. And um, she had no idea why this was happening. She was good and righteous and faithful and so on. She had no idea why, why these men were, were being, um, nobody could take her to husband. <clears throat> so on one occasion, she corrects her handmaid for something. And the maid says to her, are you going to kill me like you killed your seven husbands? So this was a blow to her heart. People were blaming her for their deaths uh, at the hands of a demon. So Sarah locks herself in a room for three days. She neither eats nor drinks, is tormented by shame and humiliation, and she never loses her faith in God, but she prays that God would either take away her reproach or her life. It was too painful to live. And so this is, this is the backdrop of the story, and it is into this situation God sends the archangel Raphael, who heals them both. He takes a son of Tobias uh, out. He restores his fortunes to him. Along the way, he meets uh, Sarah, the daughter of his kinsman. He's married to her. He brings her back. Uh, um, uh, everything is, um, we would say, resolved. 
And St. Raphael says to them, as we heard in the, the, uh, the epistle, it was, I who heard your prayers before God. Uh, when you offered your prayers and offered your penances and were doing these works, I offered them to the Lord as an incense before him. Uh, so the angels, they go both ways. They bring God's healing to us and they bring our prayers to him. And St. Raphael says of, of Tobias and Sarah, uh, Because thou was acceptable to God, it was necessary that temptation prove thee. Because you were acceptable, not in spite of the fact that you were acceptable, temptation happened, but because of it. Because God turns all things to good to those who love him. And this is the great uh, message of this, uh, uh, of this book. In that no matter what sufferings come, uh, they will all be turned around if we place our faith and trust in God and that we are not alone. Is that not only do we have God uh, looking out for us with his providence, we have the angels present among us, our friends, our guardians, our patrons. Uh, so let's not forget that. Right? On this feast of St. Raphael, uh, let us thank uh, him and all the angels, St. Michael, St. Uh, Gabriel, our guardian angels, uh, for their intercession in the life of mankind and our own lives specifically. Uh, may we listen to their holy inspirations uh, and follow their guidance. St. Raphael, pray for us. God bless you all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.